welcome back to the channel guys today we have a 16 f550 and this one we are shuttling super duty this old puppy got 81 thou on the clock and came in for a check engine light for that DTC all right so just like our 20 ba which is the fault for the DEF heater sender, we have two other heaters, which one is in the pump, one is in the tank, which is for the 20BA, and one is in the line. So we're actually gonna be going for 20BD, which is right here. See that? Let me click on that again. See how there's heater A, heater B, heater C? Heater A is the in-tank, which is the extended coverage, which you've guys seen me replace for that uh, transit and uh, the pickup Super Duty. And then uh, we have our reductant heater C, which is in our pump, which I rarely, rarely, rarely ever get, um, but I have done a quite a few uh, 20 BDs. And this one is pertinent to the reductant pump assembly heater, same pinpoint test, but it also has another one under there that says it could be the pressure line. So let's go through pinpoint test RH. All right, it asks us some questions. Is this the DTC that we got? Yes, you guys can see at the bottom left there for 20 BD, it's gonna want us to go to RH 16. Okay, so this pinpoint test is for the Transit, the Super Duty, and the 650-750. So RH 16, wants us to check the reductor pressure line heater assembly and reductant pump assembly circuits for an open. But right now at the very beginning, we're talking about a transit. So we need to scroll down until we get to, oh, there's 65750, where's our super dizzle? Okay, um, all others. Reductant pressure line heater assembly connector disconnected. Reductant pump assembly connector disconnected. Um, we are going to go for this connector here. Um, this is actually on the DEF line. You guys can can uh, take note of that. When I take it off, I'll show you guys. But uh, yeah, let's get this thing up in the air. All right, really quick to add to that pinpoint test, going ahead to RH19, um, because I know that there's not an issue with the reductant pump heater uh, based on this particular DTC, I'm going ahead to skip right to actually checking the resistance of our pressure line. So again, we'll get this thing up in the air. Notice we're checking the component side for pins one and two, and we should be between three and five ohms. Get to use my sweet ass columns again. Come with me and let's turn them on. All right, let's tell this bird where we are. Front left, left rear, right rear, right front. All right, let's lock these puppies in place. All right, let's check everything out. Go around, make sure our tires are all good. Make sure nothing's shifted. All right, we look good here. Yep, look good here. Oh yeah. And these batteries are charged, they're sounding crisp. Uh, let's go on the other side of the drive shaft. Here is our line. This is our electrical connector. I've already disconnected it for you guys. Uh, we are going to be checking this component. So it'll probably be a little easier just to take this line off to get access to the connector that way. This is what we need to check. Those two pins right there. And then that line is going to snake Oops. all the way through the depth bracket um, and then attach you know to, to right here and then you can see it go all the way over here all the way over here down to 
the death injector. Uh, you can see it wiggling. So that line has a coiled wire all the way around it, which heats up our death going to our exhaust. So let's get our electrical equipment and test what our resistance reading is across those two pins. All right, so I got the meter. Um, remember the pins, uh, the uh, terminals, I'm sorry, I showed you in my toolbox video. Uh, make sure you guys pick these up from Rotunda. They work awesome in situations such as this to make sure you get the correct connection. So we're gonna go for these two pins right here. Remember, we're checking resistance. So let's get one on and let's get the other. Okay, watch our meter. Okay, now do you remember what our spec was supposed to be? Let's reevaluate that. Okay, three to five ohms. That is not within spec. Well, I have a new one over here. Let's compare and contrast. This is the new one. This may not be your particular number. However, that is the base part number of the line you need. Uh, depending on wheelbases, what's going to depend on these last numbers here. Uh, if you got a real long one, obviously you'd need uh, one of these shorter, uh, vice versa. But that's all its splendor. It just comes, comes in a bag like this. Okay, here's the line all bundled, all nice. Kind of smells funny. I don't know. I can't describe it. It's like a chemically rubbery smell. Nonetheless, I've already got one terminal hooked up. Let's get the other one, shall we? Okay, I'm gonna get it just ready to slide on. Okay, get ready to look at the meter. Okay. We are. Oop, it fell off. Let me put it back on. Let me put it back on. There we go. Okay, so our meter, 3.8. So you guys can definitely see the difference on what it read. Uh, ours was almost 8K ohms. And this one is bouncing right about 3738 3, ohms. So uh, conclusion for this repair is obviously replacing this line. I don't necessarily think I have to give you a rundown of how to replace that line. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. There is a bunch of uh, locating tabs that hold the line to the body in various spots all the way down. Uh, you will have to take this loose. You don't have to, but I would recommend you taking this loose. Just pop this little bracket out, no big deal. And you can actually see there's another uh, alignment tab further down holding the line to this bracket. I mean, it's really uh, not that big of a deal to do. So, all right, before you guys leave, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. If anybody's had a P20BD for their death line heater resistance, um, yeah, follow me. Check me out, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next Friday. Peace.